Okay, standard 6.21 and 6.22 is the algebra standard. Okay, if you're asked to evaluate the following, the first thing you need to do is remember your order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide in the same step, and add and subtract in the same step. So we're going to start with parentheses. We don't have any. We're going to move on to exponents. Remember, 3 cubed means 3 times 3 times 3. This is not 12. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we still have to multiply by 3. So 9 times 3 is 27. So that's going to be the value of 3 cubed. 2 to the 4th power, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We have 4 of them. I'm going to actually do these in pairs. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then 2 times 2 is 4. And then I can just multiply those together. 4 times 4 is 16. So that's 2 to the 4th power, and then I'm going to have to have 5 squared, which hopefully you know is just 5 times 5, which is 25. Now I have all the numbers I'm going to use, but I need to put them in the correct order and make sure I have all the right signs. So I have 27 plus 16 minus 25. Now, if I go in order, I have 27 plus 16. Oops. That's going to be 43. And then I'm going to subtract 25 from the 43. Many of you will recognize these questions from your test. That's where I pulled them from. So the answer should be 18. All right, the next one, same thing, order of operations, parentheses first. Multiply and divide in the same step. Add and subtract in the same step. I'm going to start with parentheses. 12 times 2 is 24. And then I'm just going to copy the rest of it down. That took care of my parentheses. Now I'm going to move on to exponents. I have 4 cubed off to the side. I'm going to show that as 4 times 4 times 4, make sure you're taking your time, 16, and I still have one more 4 I have to multiply it by, 16 times 4 is 64, so now I'm going to rewrite it as 64 plus 11 minus 24, I don't have any multiplying or dividing, so I don't need to worry about that, I just have to add and subtract in the same step, 64 plus 11 is 75, and then minus 24 will give me 51. It's really interesting. A lot of you had a really, really, really tough time with this on the test. Funny thing is they were all on my word wall. And I have people, only a few people, that actually have the right things. They just mixed them up. Most people use really, really random things. My word wall is not there now. But part A, if I have something equal to something else, that is called an equation. It's when one thing equals another thing. Part B and C, if you look at them separately, they're not equal to anything. So if they don't equal anything, they're just expressions. An expression is something that does not equal anything. 2z, 4z. 3, 3y, 2y, and 2, these are all terms. When I have 2z, something like this, the 2 is called the coefficient. The coefficient is what you are multiplying your variable by. Since I just gave you that, hopefully you know the next one. The coefficient is what you multiply the variable by. The variable is the letter that represents a number. It's called a variable. So when something equals something else, that's an equation. If you have letters and symbols that represent something but doesn't equal anything, it's an expression. A term is all of the sections of your expression or your equation. 
The coefficient is the number you multiply your variable by, and the variable is any letter or symbol that represents a number. If you need to watch it in the video, you can go to that part. Um, One-step equations, you guys actually did really well on these on the test. My job is always to get y by itself. So in this case, I have y plus 2.5. You're always looking at this operation because you're going to do the opposite. So since it says to add, I'm going to do the opposite, which is just going to be to subtract. And I'm going to go ahead and make my line so I know, know that I did the same thing on both sides. Now I just have y equals, and then 7.5 minus 2.5 is just 5. Please make sure you're checking them. If y is 5, that means that 5 plus 2.5 should equal 7.5, and it does. Um, on this one, since there's no sign, the sign that's there is multiply, it's just not there. So we have to do the opposite, which is going to be to divide. So I'm going to divide by 4 and divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is just 1y. 20 divided by 4 is 5. When I check it, I'm just going to have 4 times 5, and I want to know, does it equal 20? And yeah, it does. 20 equals 20, so it checks. This is the same thing. Right now you have them multiplied together, so you're going to have to divide. I know that when I divide fractions, I can copy dot flip-flop or multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to actually skip a step here. I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal because that would be the same as dividing by one third. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. This is a faster way of doing it than having to actually write out the division steps, but that's really what I'm doing. So now, I put this over 1 so I can multiply my numerators and multiply my denominators. So the numerator is 12 and the denominator is 1. So my answer is just 12. Y equals 12. When we check it, one third of 12, remember of means multiply, is 4. I want to know if that's true. Well, if I took 12 and divided it into thirds, it would definitely equal 4. But let's go ahead and, and rewrite it. So I'm going to put it over 1. If I multiply my numerators, I'd have 12. If I multiply my denominators, I'd have divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 does equal 4. Lots of trouble with that one on the test. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Make sure you watch it again if you need to. Four times a number is greater than 48. What are the possible values? First, it tells me to write an inequality. Well, I'm writing four times a number. That's 4n. It's greater than 48. In order to solve for n, I know that I got I need to divide both sides by 4. This is just like a regular one step. Now I have n is greater than 12. A lot of you put a dot at 13 when you did this because you knew it had to be greater than 12. But the truth is, it could be anything just a teeny bit greater than 12. It doesn't have to be 13. So since it doesn't include 12, I'm going to draw an open circle. That means it doesn't include 12, but it's going to include everything else. And it tells me that my number has to be greater than 12. So if I think about 13, that's greater than 12. 14 is greater than 12. 10 is not greater than 12. So I know that my arrow has to go this direction because any of these numbers are greater than 12. I'm go ahead and erase that one. Make sure you know how to do that. If it has this symbol or this symbol, that's going to be a closed circle. And if it's just like this, that's going to be an open circle. That means it does not include that number. Combining like terms and distributive property, these were not great either. Like terms, you're looking at the variable and its degree. So this variable, x, has a degree of 1 that you can't see. I'm going to circle the sign with it. That variable has x, one, a sign that you can't see. And then you've got these guys. If I'm combining my x terms, since they both have the same degree of 1, I just have 2 plus 5. Altogether, that's 7x. 
x. A lot of you lost it on this one. It's negative 3 plus 4. If you picture the number line and you start at negative 3 and you add 4 on, you're going to end up at 1. If you need to write a number line when you get into positives and negatives and write that on your TCAP test, do that. It's not going to hurt you. Just write it on your, on your test if you need to, as long as you have space for it. So 7x plus 1 is the answer on that one. Now this one tells me I need to do distributive property first. This is your double rainbow. Make sure you're multiplying them. 2 times x, 2x. The sign stays the same. 2 times 5 is 10. And then I still have this guy. I haven't done anything with him, so I'm just going to write plus 3x. Now if you notice, I actually have terms I can combine on this one too. Gentlemen, stay focused. I have terms I can combine on this one too, because both of these have the same degree. So I have 2x plus 3x, that's 5x, but I can't combine the negative 10 with anything, so it's just 5x minus 10. Alright, we're going to go through this one kind of quickly. Use symbols and letters to write the following expressions. 7 less than a number. That means I have a number and I take 7 away. A lot of people mix these up and wrote 7 minus n. It's not that way. It's a, a number and then 7 less than that number. A number plus 10 is just a number plus 10. A number divided by 3 is a number divided by 3. Now, this over here tells me to evaluate if n equals 9. That means I'm actually going to pretend that instead of n, I have a 9 there. So when I evaluate, I'll just have 9 minus 7, which is 2. I would have 9 plus 10, which is 19. And I would have 9 divided by 3, which is 3. When you evaluate, you're just plugging this number in for your number. some and the total comes to $77. How many did you buy? I know you know the answer to this. This is good. But I need to know what's the dependent variable. So you know that you have cost and you have DVDs. You have to think, does DVD depend on the cost? Or does cost depend on the DVD? And cost is actually going to depend on the DVD. So cost is my dependent and DVDs are my independent. Now remember your dependent variable always goes on the y-axis. If you need to write that down, write that down. This is your dependent variable. Oops, I wrote the wrong word. So your dependent variable is cost. It's going to go on the y-axis, which means your DVDs are going to go on the x-axis. So I am labeling my graph right now. A lot of you wrote y and x. That's good, but you need to know which axis belongs to which piece of your equation. So I'm going to go ahead and I know the total comes to $77. So I can work backwards and say, oh, it's $11 for each DVD. So that's $11 for one. This is my unit rate right here. Two DVDs would cost 22. Three would be 33. Four is 44. 5 is 55, and then 6 is 66. Overall, you guys have been doing really well at these. So if I'm labeling DVDs, I'm just going to label these by 1. And I'm going to label these by 11, because that's just going to be a lot easier than trying to put any other numbers. And then I know that for one DVD, it was 11. For two, it was 22. And it's just going to keep going up like this. Now a lot of you skipped this question. Show how you would use the graph to find the cost of 9 DVDs. Well, this is 7, 8, 9 DVDs right here. To find the cost of 9, I just need to come up this line until I find where that line crosses. And if I come over here, I would be able to see, oh yeah, at this point, 9 DVDs is going to cost $99. So you should be able to see it from there. 
And this is the end of standard 6.21 and 6.22 that covers your algebra standard.